Hello. We are about to read Chapter 19 of Becoming Nami Naomi by Pam Munoz Ryan. So let's take a deep breath in and exhale. And let's begin. Chapter 19, A Cry of Hounds. On Christmas mor morning, Owen and I stood in the yard and looked up. I had to pinch myself to make sure I was not dreaming. A jungle of painted beasts floated beneath the jacaranda tree, the leaves and purple flowers like a canopy above them, tied to the branches with transparent fishing line. The carved wooden animals appeared suspended. When a warm breeze tickled the dragons, reptiles, birds, and lions, they twirled and swayed. Ona and I lay down on the ground and watched them. A few minutes later, Santiago came out from behind the trailer where he had been waiting. He lay down next to us. And we, watch, we watched the spectacle to the music of Owen's raspy laughter. Later in the afternoon, I sat outside carving with Santiago. He was an expert on wood and had brought some of the special copal branches from the trees in the mountains. I loved watching him carve. He held up a curved branch. Each piece has a personality. Sometimes you can look at the wood and see exactly what it might be. The promise reveals itself early. Other times you must let your imagination dictate what you will find. How do you see your soap today? It's a dog, right? I nodded. I'd been working on it for several days. This end will be the, the tail here. I pointed to the bottom corner. Um, this will be uh, one of its legs running. Santiago nodded. Almost done. I pulled my knife across the soap, but dug a little too deep, and a large piece crumbled to the ground. With one slip of the knife, I had accidentally carved off the running leg. I gasped. No, no, no. Do not be sad, said Santiago. There is still some magic left inside. Let us say the missing leg is symbolico of a tragedy or something the dog has lost. Or that it is destiny, that the dog was to be with three legs. He picked up my carving, and with a few strokes of the knife, smoothed the ragged piece into a perfect three-legged dog. You must carve so that what's inside can become what it's meant to be. When you are finished, the magic will show itself for what it really is. Santiago considered an odd-shaped piece of wood. When the promise does not reveal itself early, your imagination must dictate your intentions. Then, the wood or the soap, it will become what you least expect. Sometimes the wood fools me. I think I am carving a parrot. And when I am finished, it has a fish tail. Or I begin a tiger, and in the end, it has the body of a dancer. With the small machete, he scraped at the layers of bark that had built up over time, exposing the innards of what used to be a tree branch and revealing the unprotected heart meat. He traded the machete for a knife and chafed at the wood with quick strokes. Soon, he handed me a rough figure. I held it up in the air. I could see that it was a lion's body with a human's head, maybe that of a girl. As I turned it around admiring it, Graham came out of the house and slowly sat down in one of the chairs. She stared at her folded hands and cleared her throat. I just checked with Mrs. Maloney. The mediator, a young woman, showed up at Avocado Acres yesterday to interview her. Imagine showing up on Christmas Eve. The woman asked Mrs. Maloney where we were because she needs to talk to all of us by Friday, January 3rd. Mrs. Maloney told her we'd return for our, from our family vacation in time for the interview, which is what I had told her to say if anyone asked. 
That's in nine days. And what, with four or five days driving ahead of us? I'm sorry, Naomi, but Bernardo said we should leave the day after tomorrow. I took a deep breath and looked around the yard. Can't we just stay here? I asked, my hands suddenly quivering. You like it here. You said so yourself. I heard Owen and Reuben's giggles coming from the garden. Owen loves it, and we could we could go to school here. We, we could learn Spanish real good. Or, or we could go to Puerto Escondido and, and live in the little house and help sell the carvings. I could learn to paint them like Aunt Teresa. And Santiago pulled me from my chair to his side on a small wooden bench. He put his arm around me. Naomi, I would love for you to come to my house, but right now your life is in California. I have written a letter for the judge. I told the truth about your mother and that my wishes are for you and Owen to live with Maria. I told that I want to be a part of your life and see you, maybe in the summer for vacations, if that is all right with you and Owen, more if it is possible. My lips trembled. I stared at the ground. I did not fight with you when you were little, said Santiago. It is something for which I am sorry. I should not have believed your mother when she said I would never be able to see you. If I had been stronger, maybe things could have been different. But maybe they would not be so much different. How will we ever know? I looked at him. But why can't you come with us? For that to happen, he said, I would have to prepare. Much would need to be done. Sell my house, my boat, much of my money comes from my carvings, which are only sold in Oaxaca. My work is here. But what if the judge... Naomi, said Graham, we are not going to consider the worst that could happen. Thinking that way does not help self-prophecies. Since we'd found Santiago, Graham was wearing her, her fierceness again, at least on the outside. I guess I'd better tell Owen, said Graham. I will go with you, said Santiago, and they headed toward the garden, alone. Beneath the jacaranda, I stared at the three-legged dog and the lion girl in my lap. We rode home to Lemon Tree silently. The truck and baby beluga seemed to drag along the highway. We traveled with less than what we had brought, choosing to leave many things for Flora, Pedro, Graciela, and Ruben. So why did we seem to plod along? Did the weight of our memory slow us down? For hundreds of kilometers, I held the lion girl and thought about all that I wanted to tell Blanca, especially about my father. On our last day in Oaxaca, Owen and I had gone everywhere with Santiago to visit Aunt Teresa, to El Zocolo, to El Mercado for pineapple coconut ice cream, and to admire the stature, statue of Soledad in La Basilica. I would never forget that day. The statue with the long robe, a crown of gold, the sparkling stained glass windows. Our footsteps echoing on the floor, holding Santiago's hand and listening to his adoration. Our Lady of Solitude is loved by sailors and fishermen, he said. She protects us at sea. When our boats are rocking in a storm, when it is foggy and we cannot see the way, when we need to get home and our motor fails us. Then we ask for her assistance. She is part of Oaxaca. And since you have her name, you have been here to see the wonder of the city. Oaxaca is a part of you. The morning we left, Santiago came early to help Bernardo load the last of the luggage. He cut down all the animals hanging from the jacaranda tree and gave them to Owen and me. It was a long goodbye. What with Flora running back and forth to the kitchen with one more bundle of tamales and 
Pedro rechecking the tires of the truck and the trailer, and Graciela and Benny chasing Owen, Reuben, and Lulu around the yard. It was the kind of goodbye where everyone hugged and kissed every single person, then stood around talking and looking at each other. Then all of a sudden started hugging and kissing everyone again, crying a little each time. When we, fin when we were finally ready to climb into the truck, Santiago hugged me and said, Be brave, Naomi Leon. I nodded. But when he took me in his arms one more time and rocked me back and forth, I didn't pretend to be brave. Do not be sad, he whispered. We have found each other. I will write. You will write. We have much for which to be thankful. And everything will be the way it was meant to be. You will see, I promise. I promise. Now, you must promise. I promise. The truck jolted as Bernardo downshifted on the highway. Oaxaca had long disappeared from our view. I opened my notebook to make a list of all that I hoped to remember, but I closed it. My pen seemed too heavy to lift. And that is the end of the chapter. I'll see you next chapter.